So hi, my friends. I come on today because, like I showed you on my last video, or next to the last or whatever, I'm not sure, that I was doing these here squares, these for a quilt. And, and then I, was, I told you that I was going to show you how I um, am doing the sashing. I've never done a quilt with sashing in it before because I just thought it would be too hard. Oops, go over here. And um, so, but the these this here, see how I've just put the sashing on two sides here of these these little squares. So this is just the start of it. But what I did was I bought yardage of black fabric because I looked first into buying a jelly roll of just black fabric, but a jelly roll of black fabric is like, you've got to give them one arm and one leg and they'll send you a roll of them. How are you going to sew with only one arm and one leg? But anyway, so this is what I do. This And, and as I was um, researching to find out different ways of doing the sashing, there is different ways people do sashing. And I always thought it was going to be real hard. So I hadn't really tried it at all. And so, um, but what I did, I bought yardage. They had at Walmart these, um, where you can buy a four yard fabric, which this is 65% polyester, 35% cotton. And so it's not the, I think I would have rather had just cotton, but that would have been more money. This for four yards was right at $10. So that wasn't bad. That sure, I sure can make a lot of two and a half inch strips out of, um, I can make a lot of two, two and a half inch strips out of that much fabric. So what I do to do this sashing then is I'm going to cut a piece and I'm going to cut it to the 12 inches. That's going to fit right on here. But what I'll do, instead of cutting it, I'm going to just, um, well, you can't, you can't say what I'm doing. You can't say what I'm doing. I got all my junk in my way. Everything. Oh, well, anyway, you can sort of see what I'm doing. And so what I'm doing is I, um, I gotta get fancy like them fancy people where you got one camera pointing in this direction, one camera in this direction, and one from up here and one. No, I'm not gonna do that. You just gotta just, you know, believe what I say. Okay, so I'm sewing this on. Oh stop. I don't want it on that. I want it on oh please. I had it on some funky stitch here, and I only want a straight stitch. So let me unfunky it. I gotta unfunky the stitch. So let me get back up here. And there. Now, now my stitch is unfunky. So I'm gonna make a, like a quarter of an inch seam allowance and just stitch. stitch that 12 inches stitch a piece 12 inches on here I'm not going to cut it ahead of time I'm going to stitch it and then cut it so and this is the one way of doing it and if you if you look at different if you look at different um hi a little bit little if if you look at different people you'll see different ways of putting in in the um, the sashing. So what I did here is I just stitched it on that much and then I'll cut it. I'll cut. Then I'll just cut cut it like this right here. 
So that way it's cut exactly right. Because I am a perfectionist. I'm not a perfectionist. I'm lying. And you see that little area right there with their orange dress? That's because they went to the harvest. Where did you go? They went to the pumpkin patch this morning, and they had all kind of fun games and a petting zoo and all kinds of stuff. And so her and her sister were wearing the same kind of dress, and oh, that made for such pretty pictures. They're going to go trunk or treating tonight. Okay, so then I'm going to take, now this one's just a little long. I'm going to take and I'm going to stitch on the second side so that two sides... We'll have the um, two sides. We'll have the the um, have the 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 um, what did we just call that? Sashing. Two sides will have the sashing. So now I'm going to stitch that about a quarter of an inch. I see this neat thing advertised. It's a little metal thing that will just stick on your sewing machine, magnetized to your sewing machine, but then you can adjust it to whatever size seam allowance you want, and your seam allowance is perfect every time. But see, so much of my machine is plastic, though, that I don't know if it will actually actually stitch right or if it'll actually stick right because my my machine is mostly plastic okay so then now so now then I will cut I'm too much junk here too much junk I have too much junk in my trunk. Okay, so now I will cut that. Let me just use my ruler and my, I should just use my rotary cutter because that works better for getting me a straight line here. Okay, then, already then. But then... Then see, so then I got that on just two, just on the corner like that. I'm going to go ahead and press that. Pressing and ironing, it's the same thing. Some people say press, some people say iron. And I go back and forth. Sometimes I say press and sometimes I say iron. And then, then we'll start, um... Then we start putting the pieces together. Like once you have, once you have, um, go back there. What's this? Well, that's a little thing. Okay. See, um, then we're going to stitch them together like this here. See? So, um, well, i got to snip off these threads here. And so now I'm going to go and put these together like this. And so, so then what the black edge right there on this one's first piece I put down was 12 inches, and the second one was like 14 inches, I guess. Sort of. Sort of like that. And so, then I'm going to stitch those together. I don't know if this will turn out like perfect, but you know what? When you live out in the boondocks, um, it doesn't matter. This, how come that ain't fitting on there just right? Oh, because I cut that crooked. Oh. Well, I'll just try and fix it as I go through.
And there we go. We're getting that. Okay, I don't know why that didn't fit exactly right, but you know what? I'm not going to... I was having trouble with my threading this morning, and so I took my machine apart and, you know, this whole thing down here, and cleaned out the dust. There was dust bunnies in there like you wouldn't believe. So that's why I was having that trouble with the thread bunching up on underneath. But see now how that is? Now I'm going to put another, I have another, I have another piece here. Now some of the fancier quilters, they got like a design board, they glue up, stick, they stuff up all their pieces on the design board and see how it's going to look. Well, mine's going to look however it looks. That's how mine's going to look. Mine's going to look however it looks. I don't have a design board. I don't have a wall to put a design board on. So Some people use a floor, but if I was to get down on the floor as my design board, um, the rest of my life I'd be down on that floor. I'd be in the design of the quilt. And so now we're getting the second one on there. Or no, or this will be block number three on there. We'll just get that right on there and stitch it right on down. I flip flop from one thing to another to another to another. I got like four quilts going right now. Four. I think I get bored easy or something. I don't know what it is. Let's see now. See how it shows three. Now I got one more with the, well actually I got two more with the sashing on two sides. So I'm gonna put these two together. Oh, honey. Draw lines with your pen or pencil. Lick your finger and smear the lines. <laughs> I did exactly that. You did exactly that. That was disgusting. That was disgusting. She's doing her rectus journal page. She's doing a couple of pages on the rectus the journal. Lots. She's wrecking her journal. Ready? What, darling? Lose this page. Throw it out except the loss. Really? Throw it out and accept the loss. Now there's a trash can right under there. That wrecked this journal thing, you guys. That is funny. All the things Came you have to do. the journal in public place and invite people to draw here. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. Collect your pocket lint. Blue here. Your pocket lint. I'm going to do that one later. So I don't have a lot of lint. It's just corn. She's got corn in her pocket because when they went to the harvest thing. Oh, there trace was... your hand. <laughs> oh, trace that's your hand. Hands. Yep. Here's my first one, second one. When they went to the harvest festival thing this morning, there was like a pool you could get in that was full of corn. And you could just get in that corn and play in it. Like dried popcorn, you know? Like not pop, unpopped popcorn. And so, and she came home with some of it in her pocket. Uh -huh. <laughs> but then she went and fed it to Sheldon. Sheldon is that rooster that just showed up on our property. Oh, and I was angry yesterday. <laughs> fill, fill in this page when you are really angry. Oh, and she filled in that page. Okay, so now, I wonder if I want this any wider than this. I don't think I want it any wider than this. So this... Is that the Grinch? Yeah, the Grinch is in there. This will be like an eye spy quilt when it's done. Yes, so I might let it be this length or this width. Because what I'm doing is I'm making 
quilts that'll be for movie night. So when we're all cuddled up on the couches and the chairs and we're watching movies, especially if it's scary, you need a blanket. Because if you have a blanket when you're watching a scary movie, then the monsters can't get you. And so we're going to, I'm crocheting one that's getting, using the um, crow knit, crow knitting. I'm doing crow knitting and making a blanket with that one. That one's taken me forever, but it's going to be nice and cozy too. And it'll keep the monsters away. And then this will be another one, see? So then my next row, I'll start now and then I'll do another row. And so I'll put four, one, two, three, four, four blocks together. I have one right here ready to start the next row. And then I'll put the two rows together. And then at the end of it, I, oh, this goes over here. And then, um, and so then for the, then I'll have one side, no, I'll have two sides without any sashing on it. And that's when I'll just put a straight edge, a black sashing on the outside edge. But I find that this way, and this doesn't look bad. I think that looks just fine, like that way. And and so that's how I'm going to do that. But um, oh, that's what's in my way here. I got to give this to your dad. That stuff don't work for what I thought it was going to work for. Okay, um, so I got this quilt going. And then I have... Okay, and so then I have... Oh, these are the two, two of the bags that we made the other night. If you saw our live stream, me and Aria each made a little tote bag. We made those. Those are very easy. And then... Oh, I made this one block so I want to try and do a hexi quilt but I I have this is done with a two templates one is seven inch and one is eight inch but I think I want to do it I think I went ahead and ordered me a six inch hexi pattern template because I want to um I want I want the outside piece to be bigger so I can actually fold it more around. So that's what I'm, I'm working on. So maybe I got five of them. And then I'm making 12 inch blocks. This is for, this is all going to be one quilt. But the way this one's going to be done is, see, I just, all of my blocks are just crazy blocks, but see, this is one of my blocks finished because this is a quilt as you go. So this block is finished and it's, um, it's, I got flannel on the back of it. And so and then this block is finished and so I only got three of these blocks finished. But how these are going to be is I'm going to hand stitch them together. So they're just going to butt together like this. And then I'm going to hand stitch them. So that'll be just like a whip stitch is all I'm going to do. Because I don't do nothing like with any kind of rules. I like make my own rules. And so I have a lot of these ones cut. I have them cut and ready to go. I got a lot of them. The, the quilt squares are done, made up, but then I got a lot of fabric um, flannels for the backs. And then my friend just sent me a, I think four yards of white flannel. So what I want to do when I put the, as I put them together, I want a white in between each of the colored one, so it would be like a checkerboard down the back. And because I want the backs to be pretty too. But this is one that I'm working on. And um, that's going to be pretty because the, see, because I, I guess I get bored with just doing one. And so I got to keep switching. And so, what part? You know the inside of our bags? Yeah. Do you have any more of those? I want to make a 
Oh, yeah, I got more of those. I just need to. You want to just make a, um, okay, here. You need some fabric to make a pillow. Uh-huh. Just a minute, and I'll, I'll have it for you in two shakes in the lamb's tail here, girl. <laughs> here you go. So you can take your two. There, you can put them right up there. If you want to. All right, and so then another one. What else am I working on? Oh, then that's this one. No. Oops, this is Febreze. It's not supposed to be in there. <laughs> Febreze. I need to keep Febreze around here for that dog under there. Oh, yeah. yeah. She farts. And so this is one that I'm working on. Now, this one here is also, I'm, I'm putting the, the pieces together with, now these are used in the templates as well. And I, and I put the pieces together using the sew machine, but then I am putting the... Oh, this one's gorgeous. I make the pieces complete with the sew machine, but then I use the... Um, just stitching by hand to actually attach them together. So I've got a few of these ready to go on... See, I've got them come like the squares. I mean, the rectangles are completed, but then they go on like in, um, oh, what would you call that? Like a herringbone. It, the, the herringbone design is how those ones will all be stitched together. So this one will be fun, too. This one will be fun also with the, um, to make a, um, to work on, on the I Spy. Mm. And so, yeah, I have quite a few of those pieces together. The pieces are, and just I got to stitch them, and then I'm stitching them all together using the multicolored threads. So I have them in there. This is a, and this is what even the backs will be, the back of it will be pretty too. This one has to go up here. But anyway, that one, you can see more of the herringbone kind of design by looking at the back. But that's another quilt in progress. I got a lot of things in progress. And so, all right. And I thought I had another one. Oh, well, maybe not. But anyhow, you got a you got a thread hung up here. Okay. It's your, you can actually cut that little piece of. Oh wait, no, 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 you didn't I have know, to. I can restart. Okay, here's a pair of nippers. Um, and so she's going to be the seamstress of the family, and it won't take her long either. Be very, be very careful that you're now trying to make a, th this seam down the side. Let me see where. Let me see how even you got that. Well, you got it pretty even. And remember what I said about the presser foot. You want to watch the edge of that presser foot that it says right on the edge. Because see how your seam is not exact. Go ahead and rip that seam out of there with your seam ripper. And and because we got to really practice on getting a straight seam. Oh, and you know what, too, Aria? Mm -hmm. This one, I want you to do this one a little bit different than you did the little ones. The little ones, you left the raw edge. This one, you I don't want you to leave the raw edge. So go ahead and get that stitch out and that seam out, and then I'll show you. Um, so anyhow, yeah, that's what that's what's going on here. Is we're we're the sewing factory, me and Aria. This is a. I used to work at a sewing factory, which it got a little bit boring. I I think because um. I for a while I worked at Jester Kid. It was called Jester Kids Clothes, and so it just was Jester Kids Clothes. It was, I don't even know if it's down there anymore. It used to be down in Tarpon Springs. And, um, but you'd get, like, I'd get there at a sewing machine and maybe the whole day I would be sewing pockets 
on the left side. That's it, pocket, left side. And you get paid by the bundle. So you got a bundle of the shirts and the pockets. And that's what you did. You stitched those pockets on, and that's how much you, you got paid for the bundle. And, um, but after a full day of just showing someone uh, pockets on, or then, then it'd go, that bundle would go to the next sewer, and she would sew something else and whatever. And um, it was fun, though, but you did the same thing, same thing day after day after day over and over and over until you got one order because you know it might be of the same outfit you might end up making four thousand of the same outfit you know so that's like doing a lot if you're doing a collar you do four thousand of the color collars exactly the same and so yeah that can get a little bit boring but um i was young then didn't take me much to get bored then either but this is going to be a fun pretty quilt i'm thinking that and by putting the sashing in between the squares, that really makes the squares really pop, you know? So each square is a square on its own. I think it actually looks better than if I was to sew the squares together. So I'm going to like this a lot. I, I like it already a lot. It's going to be really pretty. See that Grinch they're hiding in there? Yeah, he's in there. And so so I'm going to be sewing now a lot more of the, getting the sashing sewed on, sewn on, sewn or sewed, I don't know what the word is. So, but the, is it sewn? Thank you, darling. Sewn. And, um, but yeah, so I'm going to get the sashings put on, and that'll be pretty. Which sounds better? I sewed it? I think the song does sound better. You know, there was a show called "Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader," and I oh. I used to watch that, and um, I learned I was not smarter than a fifth grader, and so now I have a second grader here, and um, she's teaching me the stuff that I've learned just. In the amount of time she's been here just with her homework, it's like, holy smokes, I don't think I learned that until I was in the eighth grade. Then I probably didn't really learn it. But how are you getting along there? She's getting it. She's moving right along. This is a real, real pretty stack of, of squares. I have this one too. This is Christmas, Christmas, but this is a different kind of fabric. I do not know. This was sent, sent to us, and it's a Christmas fabric, but it's different. The fabric is just different. It must be some kind of a polyester. It doesn't feel like this polyester blend, but it feels like, it's almost like a silky feeling. Like silk words? Feel. Really soft and silky. But that's going to make something really pretty, too. It, it's so, like, soft and silky. But this is all Christmas fabrics in this one. And I love this. I lo These are pretty, aren't they? Okay. Now, sweetie, when you're taking, when you're, when you, when you're doing the seam, now, if you feel, you might want to put a pin in here. Like, maybe put a pin here and a put pin here. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, gorgeous girl. And so that they don't slip apart. So, like, so see, a pin here and a pin here. Okay, now when you're so now I won't put you in here because this is where you're going to start it. You see that? If you turn your light on up there, there you go. And then when you're sewing it, get put the presser foot down so the presser foot is right at the edge of the fabric. See, now the presser foot is right at the edge of the fabric. 
Now, when you're sewing, don't be watching the needle. Watch the edge of your fabric against the edge of the presser foot. And when you get almost to this pin, then take this pin out. Her and I both have to work on this straight seam thing. Okay, now you can pull that pin out. Are you still looking, looking like you're straight? Okay, you're watching that edge. Stop. Oh, are you using the push button? Good deal. All right, and then you can just put the needle down in the fabric. Just put the, there you go, and then lift the presser foot, turn it, and look at how nice and straight that looks. You got a little wider down here, but not that much. Now, And so if it looks like it's going off, you use this hand to move the fabric. Oh, that's why you needed the pin. Let me see. Oh, I don't know. You got that. You do have that pretty straight. Yeah. So you're fine. We're not looking for perfection right here. We're just looking for the best we can do. Okay, get down to the corner. And then leave the needle in. Okay, right, needle's in. So now press your foot up and give it a turn. Oh, I forgot I was going to have you. Oh, well, I was going to have you do something a little bit different. Oh, what happened there? Oh, it moved. Oh, you know what we should have done there? Needle. Um, we should have put the pins in there to hold it, hold it from going cattywampus. Well, the stripe goes cattywampus right here, so. Oh. Maybe I just like unpin the needle like this. Yeah. Okay, so pull your needle out. Just go ahead and take the whole thing off. And, and sometimes if you... Yeah, get all that pulled out of there. Okay, well, that's that's about everything for, um, for this particular video. We're going to keep on keeping on. And you just don't know what we're going to come up with next. And... Um, Look at, see this Cordula, this little pocketbook? That's what um, Aria carried with her today to go to the, um, the, the thing she went to, the Harvest Festival. Yeah, that's the one that, uh, that's the one Miss Cordula made for you. Really? Yeah, remember she made you that and sent it to you? It was under my pillow this morning, it was, but I didn't have it. Oh, so a magic fairy can I put it under your pillow? Yeah, probably. Maybe. Oh, these little journals are so adorable. Did, were they in there? Did Cordula make them too? Mm -hmm. Maybe she did. Oh, yeah. You can do journaling in these. This is nice. Very nice. Oops, I'm dropping things. These are nice. Okay, well. I did these. See how we, see how we are perfectionists and very got everything just absolutely organized here. You can even put stickers. Some of those little stickers you have. Oh, yeah. So you have been journaling. That's nice. 
Okay, we're going to read some heart thoughts again today. I'll read them. You'll read them? Well, let me go to, um, let me, you want to read? Okay, Ari wants to read. Let me find, these are a lot of affirmations. Ooh, look at this one here, Aria. This one is, I make my own decisions. Oh, this one has to do with parents. I don't know if you always get to make your own decisions. But let, let's, yeah, we're ready. <laughs> but I've got a piece of corn in my pocket from the thing. This one. <laughs> There's a bunch of these in the little tub, and they were able to sit in that tub and just kind of squish around in the corn. Okay, this is, I make my own decisions. Okay. Many of you play power struggle games with your parents. Yeah, power struggle with your parents. Parents? No, parents. Parents. Oh, parents. Parents push a lot of buttons. If you want to stop playing the games, you are going to actually have to stop playing the games. It is time for you to grow up and decide what you want. You can begin by calling your parents by their first names. <laughs> start be becoming three adults instead of two parents and child. Okay, so this is, again, written more... This real book isn't really written for children. It's written for us, adults. And so, like, well, my parents are both, all, like, up in heaven already, so... But it said, like, many of you play power struggle games with your parents. Parents push a lot of buttons. If you want to stop playing the games, you're going to actually have to stop playing the games. <laughs> it is time for you to grow up and decide what you want. You can begin by calling your parents by their first names. Start becoming three adults instead of two parents and a child. I don't think I would ever call my parents by their first names. There is no way that I would call my mother Martha and call my father Alan. No way. I don't care if I live to be a million years old. I would always, they would always be mom and dad. So, but I did have to learn to start making my own decisions. But I, not, never would I call my parents by their first names. So, some of these things I don't go along with at all. Um, let's see. When we grow up, we have a tendency to recreate the emotional environment of our early home lives. We tend to recreate relationships we had with our mothers and fathers or what they had between themselves. And now see this, this I understand more there. And um, there's a, a book that I'm reading now that is um, The Mother Wound. And it's not like your mother wounded you. It's a lot of that book is about how um, we tend to follow patterns that we learn from our parents. We just tend to learn things that way. And they call that the mother wound. And you know, because generations change, life changes, just the way of the world changes as you move along. So you kind of break away. I mean, good things that you learn from your parents, you keep that forever. But there's some things that you just have to change. So you, um, you have, I think that a word could even be changed to something else instead of a wound because a wound makes me think somebody stabbed me with an arrow or something. But um, I think more like, um, more like, um, Like it says here, we have a tendency to recreate the emotional environment of our early home lives. We tend to recreate relationships we had with our mothers and our fathers or what they had to, had between themselves. Well, one of the things, like my mom and dad, I never, I never seen them hug each other. I never heard them say I love you to each other. I never, they were, 
they didn't show affection. Not that it was a bad thing. It's just that people didn't do that then. Now I see, like watching my son and his wife and his children, they're always saying I love you and they're hugging each other and we do that. I did that. I did that not as much when my children were little, but more than what my parents did, and so it changed. And now I watch my children, and affection is showed more, shown, showed or shown, shown more. What are you doing? Shown. I'm trying to get this piece. Don't cut a hole in your dress. Your mother, I'm your not... mother will have a cow. Not... We don't want her mother having a cow. There's a but don't be cutting it. You have a hole in your... It is very interesting having children. Right? I love it. I, get, I can get bossy. <laughs> okay, I love you guys. I ask God to watch over you every step you take and every move you make. And make a quilt of, out of anything. You don't have to follow a real particular pattern or nothing. And, oh, I just wanted to show you, too, because... Oh, unless you want to, yes, of course. But, like, I wanted to show you, too, is, um, just a minute. Hold, hold on, hold, hold your horses for a minute. Now, see, the way I'm doing my squares is I have a 10 by 10 square, and then I have four 4 by 4 squares. Four of them, little boogers. One, two. Three. You have to be able to count to four. One, two. One, two, three, four, five, three, six, seven. And four. The way I put them down before, this is a little bit easier. So if you take two pieces and look at see, and see how I just laid them like this? kind of in the center, this way, diagonally. Let me get, Papa, what do you need, honey? No, too oh, I'm sorry. Jeez. I love you, but you sure do get on my nerves. I know I do. I'm sorry. I apologize. Okay, here. Now go away. Don't go away, Matt. Just go away. Okay, now. Now see, see here, you can see that. I put the two pieces on right close together and put them diagonally, just as centered as possible. Then I take those other two pieces and I put them on centered diagonal the other way, but to where the, where the, um, where the, raw edges meets the raw edge see so now but now it doesn't look just like this see this is what I want it to look like I want it to look like this so then all you have to do is reach down and get that corner and put that like this and then on the opposite side reach down get that corner and put it there and see how now, how it you get that overlapping? You just turn those two, just overlap those two. And that makes it even more, because when I showed you before, it kind of was a little more confusing. This is a little easier when I started doing this way. And then I, then I um, pin the, then I pin the, my fabrics are all glued together. Yeah, they're still together. And then I get the pins and I um and I pin one pin in each in each square where the thread where the stitching isn't going to go. And so then that'll just hold them. That'll just hold them. Just a minute, Aria, and you will have my full attention in just a minute. Well, maybe a quarter of my attention. Maybe three quarters of my attention. So then, and then I will just stitch around all the raw edges. But anyway, okay, I ask God to watch over you every step you take, every move you make, keep you safe and keep you sane and keep you humble and 
healthy and here. Yeah. All right. Okay. And I love you, and I'll see you on the next video. I certainly will. You'll probably see Aria, too, unless she's in school. But she had a long weekend this weekend. That's awesome. Okay. See you later, alligator. God bless.